So imagine you're in this situation. You're at a party, and you get to chatting with a cute girl about what TV shows and movies you both like. Westworld, Game of Thrones, before season eight, whatever insanity the Fast and Furious franchise has dropped, etc. Y'all are laughing hard and having a good time, and then you take a gamble and throw out this gem. Uh, I'm actually watching Attack on Titan right now, it's really good. She stops laughing. She then gives you this slightly puzzled smile, cocking her head a bit as she attempts to figure out what in the blue hell Attack on Titan is. That's when you realize you're talking to someone who doesn't watch anime at all. But now here's a tricky part. She asks you what it's about. Surprise, you now have a few objectives that are absolutely imperative to the preservation of the social interaction. One, relay to this person the fact that you are now talking about an animated show that is not meant for children. Not everyone needs this disclaimer nowadays, but for people whose idea of anime is solely based on Pokemon and the odd Ghibli film, better safe than sorry. Two, pitch the show to this person to give them a crash course on what makes good. It's Attack on Titan, so that's actually not too hard. It's a pretty simple concept and filled to the brim with people sitting in a room talking about politics. Just the way normies like their media. Nah, I'm just kidding. But imagine if you were talking about One Piece, Bleach, or like Arrow Manga Sensei. Would be a bit harder then, wouldn't it? And here's the final and possibly most important part. You'll have to do all of this without sounding like a total weeb. Difficult, I know, and I often fail too, but it is doable. Just resist the urge to go on tangents, keep the description as meat and potatoes as possible, and you will be fine. So you awkwardly fight against the music in the background that now seems like it's loud as hell for some reason, and the laughs of other people's conversations that are now a lighthouse guiding the way to people who are probably more interesting than you, as you pitch this person Attack on Titan. Her face scrunches up as she tries to follow what you're saying, possibly out of interest, possibly out of pity. She even asks questions about the story here and there that you could answer to make your pitch more interesting, but you'd be spoiling a major plot point of the show, but who cares, she probably won't watch it, but what if she does? So you don't spoil it, but hint at juicy secrets to be found. And then you reach the end of the pitch. She seems moderately satisfied with your explanation. She tells you that she's been thinking about getting into anime from time to time, but has no clue where to start. Surprise, you now have another mission, and the outcome of this mission will change this woman's life. Or at least a bit of her free time. You now have to recommend anime for her to watch. This is the art of the anime recommendation. So that gets me into the topic of this video. I apologize for the long-winded intro, but I felt it was essential to point out how important this is. Honestly, no meme, this is a difficult question to answer. What are good anime to recommend to someone who does not watch anime? Now, this is a completely fictitious scenario. Uh, no way an anime fan would be invited to a party or talking to a girl. Okay, obviously I'm kidding, and for that matter, I know that there are tons and tons of anime fans, uh, shonen or otherwise, who are girls, don't kill me. But think about it. Your recommendation can literally make or break this person's entire outlook on anime. If they have a bad time, or even just a middling experience with anime, not only will they determine that maybe it's just not for them and shelve it altogether, but they may even go so far as to call your taste into question and never take recommendations from you again. And rightly so. Nothing worse than trusting people with your free time just to have it wasted. I'm looking at you, the it gets better after five episodes people. So the first thing to point out is that not all good anime are good first anime. There are plenty of shows that are absolute bangers, but if the person doesn't have prior experience with anime, they could easily rub them the wrong way depending on what type of media they like. Too gory, too sappy, too boring, too confusing, too etchy, too much. 
So that being said, there also isn't a perfect one size fits all for the situation that I can give you, but I can lay out a few ground rules for recommending anime to new fans and give you a few examples to pick from. But if you know a better one to fit the person you're recommending to based on their taste, then by all means. Rule number one, nothing too long. Okay, so think about it from the other person's perspective. There's nothing more daunting than looking up a show you aren't sure if you're even gonna like and seeing five seasons, two OVAs, and a movie. Heck, even for anime veterans, that can be a tall order. So it's best to keep your recommendation to a relatively short anime that can be consumed in a few days and leave room for more. Something where the person can understand fully why you like it without dedicating months of their lives to it. So we're aiming for uh, 12 to 24 episodes here. So sorry to most shonen battle series out there, but uh, you don't meet the cut. Even you, my beloved Hunter Hunter. So what are some good picks? Uh, One Punch Man. Whoa, 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 hold the freaking phone. That has like 50 episodes or something, like two seasons. Yes, it does. But season one of One Punch Man, for better or for worse, encapsulates pretty much all the highlights of One Punch Man as a series in an easy breezy 12 episodes. The visuals, the comedy, the characters, the subtle maturity, it's all there. A person can look at an episode and say, okay, I get it. And then just carry on from there. No massive overarching plots, no complicated magic systems, no waiting to get to the good part. Every episode is the good part, with an even better part waiting for them at the end. They can choose to watch season two or they can move on to something else, feeling relatively satisfied with the experience. Remember, the goal here is to get them to watch more. Rule number two, nothing difficult to understand. As an anime fan, there are very few concepts at this point that are difficult for us to grasp. Magic ninjas, reincarnated from moon people, fighting to free the world from infinite illusion, sure. Kid riding in a robot that's actually his mom trying to stop angels from the ending the world. Whatever. Monkey men joining a multiversal tournament judged by alien gods to decide the fate of everything in existence. It's chill. Tennis! But for a lot of people who don't watch anime, they'll be using their brain power trying to keep up instead of just enjoying what's on screen. And that's no good. So as much as you might want to mess somebody's head up with something wild like Darling the Franks, Gaunts, or Wonder Egg Priority, maybe not the best move. Instead, how about we take it mainstream for a second? Demon Slayer. Nice, safe Demon Slayer. A core concept is plain as paper, but superb in execution. It's honestly the Deadpool of anime series. There's a reason the Demon Slayer movie cracked $500 million at the box office. Marketing and overhype are a part of it, but it's the accessibility that really does it. Just a very nice boy fighting monsters with his friends and trying to save his sister. 24 episodes in a movie, if you so wish. Very good bet to get somebody hooked. Rule number three be sensitive. Let me explain. It's pretty obvious that people who are more used to Western media have maybe become accustomed to a certain standard of things. A lot of elements of storytelling, yes, but also in one other area. Fan service. Now, I'm not saying that everyone who's not into anime will be opposed to it. Actually, there are a good deal of people who that will probably be a huge bonus for. But that depends on how well you know the person. So Soul Eater is one of my favorite anime of all time. But if I don't know the person I'm recommending it to all that well, then I probably wouldn't start there. Why? Because even though it absolutely slaps, the random fan service might be a turnoff. For a person who may be sensitive to issues regarding women and abuse of power, Seeing Death the Kid just decide to fondle the boobs of two girls who are essentially his subordinates might not be Gucci in their book. 
regardless of your stance on fan service issues for someone who's not used to it, it's a little much. Like imagine you're watching an Avengers movie and all of a sudden Nick Fury just walks over to Maria Hill and cops with you. And then just goes back to whatever he was doing and nobody addresses it. Yes, that's not a perfect example, but I hope you can see what I'm getting at. For some, it might change the vibe. And Soul Eater isn't even that fan servicey compared to shows like History's Mightiest Disciple or Kill the Kill. But overall, if the person you're recommending to is sensitive to subjects like this or even different stuff like suicide, domestic violence, sexual assault, or any kind of trauma, it's best to keep that in mind when choosing. This might be kind of a whatever point for a lot of people, but I just felt it was worth mentioning. So with that out of the way, I'm going to do a bit of a lightning round of other shows that can generally be good for new viewers of varying tastes. Death Note, great psychological thriller, straightforward, easy to watch, gateway into non-battle series. Angel Beats, funny as hell, interesting world building, and shockingly heartfelt. Good for people who want to cry. Jujutsu Kaisen, like, come on G. If you know the person will be into a battle series, then this is probably the one. Action packed, great characters, a little bit dark, best elements of shonen battle anime. Haikyuu, for the sporty person in your life. And The Promised Neverland, but for the love of God, stop after season one. The last bit of advice I can give is to steer clear of anything too episodic. This might be sacrilegious, but that includes Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Champloo, and even Fooly Cooly. Yes, even the legendary Fooly Cooly. I'm not saying that these are an absolute no-go, but they definitely wouldn't be my first choice. For people who like linear narratives, it might be tough for them to get invested in episodic series. So winding down, it's like I said, it really depends on the person who you're recommending to. And if you don't know their tastes, these are just some good options. But even then, you can recommend something you think is great for them, and they still might not like it. But at least you know you didn't make a bad pick. So a while back, I was trying to get a friend into anime using anime movies, just casually recommending stuff to each other. Tons of great ones to pick from, but do you know what I picked? Gaunt's Zero, the movie. To this day, I don't know what came over me. It was probably just what I remembered liking that was still on Netflix. She finished the movie, and had mostly questions about what the hell happened. Uh, that would probably have been answered if uh, she had watched the anime first, but obviously she didn't, so... She didn't hate it, but it just didn't hit right. And that made me sad. Later on, I got her to watch A Silent Voice. Great movie. Amazing movie. Just utter feels, the definition of feels. That was definitely a way better pick for her, and she enjoyed the experience. It was really fun to talk to her about her favorite parts of the film. But alas, she's still not an anime fan as of yet, but at least she knows there's good stuff to check out, should she ever want to. And before you go down and write in the comments, I know that my picks for this are super milk toast and ordinary. But the objective, as I said, is just to get them interested enough to want to see more. And what can do that better than mainstream stuff? I'm not all sub stories though. So take my wife for example. I started simple with her and then worked my way up slowly. She has now watched Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, part four, five, the Rohan Kishibe miniseries, and is now working her way through part three. Don't ask me about the order. So it is a process, 
but it is possible. You get invited to another party. You see your new friend there. She walks up to you with a new glowing aura about her, an aura you recognize. The aura of someone who's just watched an anime that slaps. She tells you she finished that show you recommended and she had a really good time. You talk about the parts that you liked. You laugh, you bask in the glory of a newborn anime fan, which is warmer and brighter than a midsummer day. She then says, thanks again. You definitely got my boyfriend interested in anime too. He said if you have any more recommendations, please keep them coming. Now, what you choose to say or do from here is up to you, but this is the power of the anime recommendation. Hey, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. As you can see from the other content on the channel, I'm not really a video essays kind of guy. It's a lot of work, I'm not good at it, and I'm not really about that life. But depending on how this video does, I may cover some other anime or media related topics in this format. So let me know if you want me to do more. I leave that ball in your court. Anyways, I'm out of here. Peace.